morgenavond. Soms een uurtje, twee uurtje of zoiets. Uh, I check every morning my Facebook and my email and all the accounts. And uh, in the afternoon when I come back from my study. And during the day I'll check Facebook and text messages just <laughs> 15 minutes. Like Only 15 minutes? Yeah, I think 15 minutes. Only social media a half an hour I think, but uh, at internet for work. Yeah, it depends, like uh, a couple of hours. Per uur, uur of twee, drie, denk ik, per dag. Nou, is dat toch wel een, dus zeg maar drie, drie uurtjes wel. Maar ja, meer spelletjes doe ik, hè. Ik ben niet zo'n internetzoeker. Zeker een uur of vier, vijf. Well, not so much time uh, in one piece, but I, I check my Facebook and my email fairly regularly. Uh, I guess at least once an hour. And there are also enough other things. Ik ben niet alleen maar zo'n robot die ik heb. information society. Never before has mankind generated so many digital data. Nowadays, everyone seems to be connected. By means of Facebook, Twitter and other social media, our personal lives are transcended into cyberspace, generating an additional pile of data. What does this all mean? And how to make sense of the abundance of information out there? Together with some media experts, we will discuss how a phenomenon known as information overload is threatening our senses, affecting our mentalities and is changing our social interactions. So what is information overload exactly? In his book, Networks Without a Cause, Geert Loving speaks of it in terms of a disease. For me, information overload is uh, a mental uh, question. I think it's uh, very personal. Um, it's probably, I wouldn't call it uh, necessarily a disease, but uh, it's probably, uh, you know, a mental phase of uh, exhaustion of, uh, of the senses. Heavy usage of internet is treated as any other addiction. It causes symptoms like depression, stress, panic, burnout and trauma. With everyday massive flows of incoming data, Information overload seems to become a real problem. Loving says that the origin of contemporary chaos is the combination of the expansion of space and compression of time. I suppose that the instant availability of it uh, and the fact that you know there's a general acceleration in society. So if you put those two things together, uh, you know, that is really uh, a big part of the, of the cause. When data piles up and there is not enough time to process it, we can no longer cope and we reach a state of attention breakdown. Het kenmerk van verslaven is eigenlijk dat er vooral veel onvrijwilligheid aan zit en dat het je, je normale leven gaat beïnvloeden. Dat geldt eigenlijk voor alle verslaving. En uh, het probleem is dat veel verslavingen ook toch een beetje ontkend worden of gebagatelliseerd uh, worden. Dus dat betekent dat je vrij gericht daar moet vragen uh, om boven water te krijgen van hoe dat nou precies zit. Uh. It sort of is addictive, social media. And uh, I read some articles about this too and I, uh, I, I wrote about it in, in this book as well. Um, you get impulses uh, when you... Uh, get a message from somebody, a mention or a direct message on Twitter. Um, this gives you a, a, a feeling like a reward. Uh, and, and this is exactly what happens in your brain. Uh, endorphins uh, are, 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 are made uh, right at that moment. So you, you keep coming back for more and more and more. I literally went to a friend of mine and I said, if I, if I sleep, I will not be able to stay in touch with everything I need to stay in touch with. 
And I said, the only, situ- the only way I can deal with being online and knowing what I need to know is if I don't sleep at all. So for me, information overload was the time when I realized that however much I tried, I couldn't keep up with what, what was happening online. So, um, and, my, and my friend back then, basically what he said was, um, do you really need to know everything? Uh, and that's when I realized, okay, you can manage overload you, if, you, if you don't want to know everything. In a highly demanding society, we have to be more competitive to survive. Being hooked up to social media has many advantages, but downsides as well. Hearing the news uh, in many, ta- many, many times earlier than uh, otherwise, uh, because my, my colleague journalists are at press conferences, are uh, in the corridors of power, and, well, they sent things earlier than, than, than when you read in the newspaper or see it on TV or even hear it on the radio? I used to be a very morning person. I'd wake up in the morning at 6 in the morning and say good morning to all my Twitter followers. So we had this kind of this club of early risers who were on Twitter at 6. And then for a while, I don't know, something happened. I couldn't get, get up very early in the morning. And I had this constant stress and frustration that I'm missing out on stuff. I always was afraid that if I don't wake up really early in the morning, I would miss out on stuff. So then what I do is I would set my alarm to ring at 6, wake up, check Twitter, say good morning, and then go back to sleep. And then wake up an hour later again with my, with my uh, phone and check again, see if something had happened, and then go back to sleep. Thus, the question arises, how is information overload affecting us mentally and physically? I, I would say this is very personal, and it really depends on how you, how you feel on a particular day. You know, what age you are, what kind of training you've had in the past to deal with the information. The world expects us to be connected reachable by email, and to process the ever-growing amount of data. The news pages refresh automatically. Emails reach us on our mobile phones, and social media updates continuously appear on our screens. When we depend on real-time media, it's no longer true that less is more. Not only more is more, but more is never enough. Could we ever return to more simpler times? I think it's possible. It's, uh, It's not really necessary and maybe it's even a romantic notion to think that you could go back to you know previous um, um, forms of uh, time pleasure or time management I think it's possible for us to uh, develop new forms of um, time consumption when I'm watching uh, at night television on my own in my private uh, living room um, and there's no family with me I have Twitter as family <laughs> um, yeah sometimes you have to stop for a day or for half a day maybe mostly half a day uh, to, to train yourself in uh, not not get that much addicted I quit social media for a hundred days <coughs> sorry and uh, after that I made some serious decisions about how am I going to deal with Facebook? How am I going to deal with Twitter? And um, one of the changes I made when it comes to Facebook, because Facebook, in my opinion, is the most personal social medium, you post your pictures and all sorts of personal information, is that I only invited real friends, friends, pe- people I really know very well, and I closed it off entirely. According to Lovink, processing information is no longer a matter of our minds. It has become a matter of a living body and its physical responses. The reason for our anxiety is not that we forget information, but that we find and try to remember too much of it. Vroeger, 30 years ago, was the information there not, and it was the same that you as a huisarts was the authority, and the people who accepted the authority also. Nu is het zo dat er zoveel informatie voorhanden is dat mensen die kunnen gemakkelijk aan die informatie komen, dus bij bepaalde klachten of bij bepaalde ziektebeelden, kunnen ze die informatie betrekkelijk gemakkelijk van het internet halen. Het, het grote probleem ervan is dat het heel erg moeilijk is om te weten of dat nou de juiste informatie is. 
Regardless where the problem lies, we feel like we have to do something because the world simply goes too fast for our brains. Loving suggests to simply go offline. We should resist the tendency towards now by expanding our time and restoring space for reflection. Shifting from fast consumption to slow media is one solution. I believe that you know there is something like in information di- diet, and uh, this is certainly uh, possible, and it's and it's uh, I think it's necessary uh, to to uh, put your computer away, uh, you know, every now and then, and, and uh, or uh, you know, to make an agreement with yourself. Well, there's one problem I also have. Um, I'm following uh, 2,050 persons. I want to bring it down beneath 2,000, but that's already not not very e- not not easy because I also like the people who don't give me news but who, who talk in certain ways about things, and I like to follow them also. But that's more like in a in a cafe. You you also like to hear from certain people certain things. Um, so I, I can advise you who to follow in the Netherlands, but then you um, then you f- find other people and you you think well they might be also interesting and well in half a year or so you follow a thousand or two thousand people. <laughs> when you're just fed up with it, stop for a while. Uh, don't use it as much. And you know it's the same with your with your phone. Um, because now that we have, we all have smartphones. We are connected to each other 24/7 wherever we are. Um, I sometimes leave them, leave it in the in the in the living room when I go to bed. But is quitting altogether or making media slower really the solution? When when these technologies, certain social media, are at their height, people will uh, consume them very very intensely. But over time, they will manage to integrate them in their, uh, uh, you know, everyday life. I block people that post on my wall. I, I generally allow people to post stuff if it's interesting. If they post crap like applications, and uh, I block everyone who tries to, uh, you know, impolitely inter- interact with me. Um, I take all the feeds of the from Twitter that I'm interested. I put them in my RSS reader, and in my RSS reader, I have this rule: if I haven't opened uh, um, a feed from a blog in in the past two weeks, I delete it. That means I haven't found anything interesting, or I don't have time for it. So one should be aware of taking in more information than one can handle. Quitting social media altogether is only a small part of the solution. Instead people should learn how to cope with the new media gradually, incorporating them efficiently into their everyday lives. Well, first of all, I think, uh, you know, you need to know why you're uh, communicating. Uh, So the the question of why you are part of this flow and what you are searching for, what you want to achieve with the people you are... um, Uh, engaging with, I think is very, very uh, important. It's the same with social media too, of course. You're you're watching what other people are doing, so don't forget to live your life. Don't forget the value of personal content, because I I also tend to think that people sometimes forget about that, how valuable it is when you really look into somebody's eyes, meet each other in, in person, you make the biggest impression, also professionally. If you want people to not forget about you, you should call or you should drop by. Don't stay behind your computer. In short, just like slow food is about awareness of what you eat, slow communication is about having control over what information you consume. The more one realizes this, the less information overload becomes a problem.